Hi guys, welcome back to Saving Salvage and welcome to part six of my RS4 rebuild. And I'm really hoping in today's video we can finally get this thing started. It is gonna be hard. I've got literally a day to turn this into a running RS4, albeit without the ancillaries and stuff, just so we can get it to a running position so we know whether it runs or not. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed these series and you have enjoyed the videos that I post, please do subscribe. Um, and also follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage as well. So as time is of the essence, let's crack on with today's video, start getting this subframe off, and get the engine mate to the gearbox, get it in, and let's get it running. It's actually taken a lot longer than I thought to remove the subframe again. I had to reconnect all the brakes and everything. Um, I had to connect some other stuff as well. It's just the subframe is really awkward shape, and it's floppy, and it's really difficult to try and do on my own. So I have actually spent nearly an hour just trying to hook the brake, get the brakes off, hook the brakes up, out the way, uh, and get the subframe to a position where I can just drop it now down. I think I may need the help of Dad to uh, balance one side if he is about, or I can try and use an actual stand. But it's heavy, twisty, annoying. So this is why the start mode is a pain in the ass because I've got all this wiring with it. However, if I disconnected this wiring, it's very difficult to fit because it goes, the wiring for it goes round the back of the start motor. So it just gets, just everything gets difficult to install. Right, so that is the engine in position. I've just done up the two engine uh, mount bolts, so it is in position. <laughs> However, my next task is I've now got to get the subframe and engine off the crane onto something because I've got to use the crane to pick up the gearbox to mount it to the engine. So this is all very interesting and uh, not too sure how I'm going to do it. I might have to go and try and get some. Um, engine stands. I'm going to have a little hunt around see what I've got. Well I mean it's on and I have taken the slack out of the crane. I'm not 100% happy with what I've rested it on but I don't really have much choice. I can't remember how I did it before. I think there was a pallet involved but I still can't really work out how that would work. Um, I'm starting to think it would have probably been easy if I left the subframe in and found a way of making the gearbox the engine and then just plopping that on the subframe. I'm not so sure now because this is going to be a bit of an act. But anyway, it's on. It's resting on a, a wire reel, um, a cable reel. So now what I think I'm going to do is, well what I am going to do is take the crane off, hope that doesn't fall off, pick up the gearbox, mate it to the back and then I'll have to also then support the back of the gearbox with a trolley jack or an axle stand just so then it's still um, okay and then what I'll do is I'll come back round the front and pick up the whole lot from the front with the engine crane and then lift it into position. That is the plan, hope it works. Right, so while I've got everything, everything hovering sort of there, I need to put the starter motor in position, which is gonna go roughly like that. Where's it go? It goes 
the like that. See, this is the problem. Look, how? So this is the issue. Look, how am I going to get that wire now onto the start motor? I'm not, am I? Not in position like that. So what I've got to do, I'm going to have to get this really long wire. I'm going to have to feed it through. Feed, put this back in a sec. Feed it through here. Feed it through to here. And I'm going to have to connect it now on this side. And then just pull it back. So now I've tucked that back out of the way as far as I can. Look, it's in position. And I have my two leads in there. It's going to keep falling down. I'll just have to pull it the best I can. But that's just an example. I mean, how much of a pain was that with the engine out, with all the access in the world? Imagine trying to do that with the gearbox in. Well, you can't with the gearbox in, but imagine trying to do it with the engine in the car. Absolute nightmare. So just before we put the gearbox on, I need to fit my drive plate here. I've also got a spacer slash washer here, which goes over the crankshaft seal, and that is in location now. So we can now fit this drive plate in one specific location, which is, oh, please don't hit the gearbox. Right, I'll just put all those in, do the bolts up, and then we'll make the gearbox up. Right guys, that is the hardest bit now done. Had to get a bit of help from my dad in the end. Uh, but the gearbox is now in position. I've just got two bolts holding it in at the moment. So what I am gonna do now is a bit off camera because it's boring doing a few bolts up. So I'm gonna put the rest of the gearbox bolts in. Um, I'm gonna put the start motor bolts in. Uh, you can just see how difficult that start motor is to get to. And actually this heat shield would be tucked right down there as well. So you wouldn't be able to see the start motor at all normally. So I'm gonna put those two bolts in as well. I'm gonna put all my drive shaft bolts in. Um, and then what I'll do is once I've done all that, I'll come back on and I'm gonna start putting the wiring at the back of the engine in so it's ready to get into position. Well guys, I thought I'd just cut in quickly just to update you on what I'm doing and what I've done. Sorry, this isn't going to be as in-depth as you'd probably have liked, but if I do in-depth of what I'm doing now, the video would be three hours long. So I'm just trying to uh, skip ahead and just put everything on time-lapse and just show you as I'm going. So, as you can see, I've been quite busy. Um, I've routed all these aircon pipes. Um, I've installed the main wiring loom, which pretty much centers here. So that's where you start it off and then it just looms branch off absolutely everywhere. Um, I've tried to do the ones along the back of the gearbox. So as you can see, we've got our gearbox electronics plugged in, uh, wiring that runs down and under um, the bottom of the engine for the sump, etc. And then you've got some wiring for the gearbox that runs under here as well. I've placed those in position. We've got our main wiring harness here, which I've just rested over there for the moment, which goes into the ECU, which is in the scuttle panel. 
Uh, and then we've got here, look, you've got another two sets of wires which branch off and they are for uh, coil packs, um, injectors and loads of other wires that go around the front of the engine and down each side. So, as you can see, I've kind of put them roughly into position. Note, you can see the coil pack plugs here. Roughly in position, I'm just building up as I go. So that's it around this side. I'm pretty sure all I've got left to do on this side is fit to the exhaust, a manifold shield, and then the exhaust. I'm leaving that till last. Um, around this side, you can see I've got recirculation valves all in position as well. Similar story around this side. I've also fitted the alternator, which is a bit tricky because it's water-cooled, so then pipes are a bit of a pain to try and plug in, but we've managed to get those plugged in, so that's fine. Um, starter motor all in position as well. Uh, so round the front here, I've just started building up. I've installed the injectors for both sides and the fuel rail as well in both sides. So they've been installed. Um, I've just started connecting up my fuel pipes here. So now I'm starting to work on inside the V. So I've just attached this coolant pipe here as well, which you can see runs along here and out the back, which actually goes to the heater matrix. So that is in semi in position there. So now what I've got to do is there's another box type thing that sits here. Uh, that is next to be installed because that again has a load more wiring that sits at the front here and goes off to various other places as well. Um, I'll just show you it down here, look. So you've got this box here, look, with a load more wiring. In fact, that's where our injector wiring is here. So that box has got to fit in the V and then, as you can see, look, loads more wires to install. So that is what I'm currently doing and it shouldn't be too long until I'm in a position where I can pick it up I like to move it all back about four, four or five foot and then my plan is to try and lower the car onto the engine gearbox. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm up to, so I'll crack on and keep going. So just a quick update what I've been doing in the V, I've installed some vac line systems, I've installed a coolant hose, I've installed just a load of what, let me get my torch, just a load of, the hardest thing is the routing, so all the injector wiring which is right down there, we've got four knock sensors as well, they're right in there as well, so we've got loads of brackets, it's just the routing of everything, trying to get it right because as I've done multiple times, I've, I've unscrewed this bracket here six or seven times because the coolant pipe like that injector pipe had to go under it and there's no way I could fold it under so I had to remove the pipe and there's also a bracket down there which I couldn't find that I had to remove the pipe for as well just loads of little things um, undoing and redoing just to get everything in the right order look but now everything is spot on looks good so that is most of the V done all I've got left to do really is actually put the inlet manifold on um, the intake flat motors which obviously the big unit that sits over the top here um, that's pretty much all that's left I do have to do some wiring around the front so I've got to route this wiring which goes across the top here and as you can see plugs onto there but I will do that once it's in the car um, I will just leave that loose for the moment same with these ones I'll leave these loose until we get it in the car so I'm pretty much done here for the moment um, as you can see I've done some routing of wiring at the back here as well everything's mostly in its correct position just need plugging in so now what I'm going to do is the last bit before um, we get it into the car is put the exhausts on so I've got to put a heat shield on there look which I've got another one to go on the other side stick the manifolds on which will come out across here and then we'll be in position to try and move it back so it's in position to lower the car onto so you can just see, look, just look how busy it looks at the back here. <laughs> look at that. Not even finished it either. Right, that took so long to move, I actually forgot I was even filming. The time lapse ran out the whole lot. So 
Um, it is now in position after about 45 minutes of trying to get it there. Struggles on your own. But we are in position, so I'm hoping it should just now lower down onto the car. So I'm just going to fit the exhaust manifolds now. I just thought it'd be a bit easier to get into position without the exhaust flapping about as well. So I'm now just going to put those on and then let's get the car down. Right guys, I'm sorry to have to do this, but that is gonna be the end for today's video. I'm sorry, I just haven't had enough time to be able to get this in the car and get it running. Uh, just everything took a lot longer than I thought. Putting all these wires, all the ancillaries, getting all the cabling, getting all the routing correct, it's just taken far longer than I thought. I mean, I must have spent 40 minutes just trying to route uh, one of the gearbox um, cooler pipes incorrectly. It's just d redoing stuff, having to use pitches, uh, that I took previously just to make sure everything's in the right order again it just took far longer than I thought it would and I only had a limited amount of time um, in the last couple of days anyway I did say I was going to get a video out Friday or Saturday I didn't want to break that I mean it wouldn't have made a difference anyway if I didn't show this video and I showed it next week instead because it's going to be the same time next week you just would have had a video less so the good news is I am now in the perfect position so that in the next video, which should be early next week, it will be 100% in the car and it will be 100% going for a start. Um, I mean, you can, I'm sure you can appreciate <laughs> how long all this probably took, like getting all these cables in the right position. I mean, it's not a five minute job. And also trying to move the engine and gearbox, getting the gearbox on is just a bit of a pain, if I'm honest, the last two days. But we are in a good position. I think the engine's pretty much in line with the car, so just lower onto it. Um, so yeah, sorry I didn't quite get that start today, guys, but don't worry, next video, 100% it will be there because we don't have much to do. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and make sure you have subscribed if you haven't already. And it will be early next week, possibly Tuesday, if it doesn't take too long and I get enough time on Monday, possibly Tuesday, we'll be going for a start at last. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Sorry it wasn't today, but it will definitely be early next week. Cheers, guys.